guys, it's Mark from Ericsson Machine and Performance. Today we're going to go through pressure testing an engine. I'm going to show you some tools that you can make yourself. Um, also some stuff you can buy, a kit that we're going to be coming out with shortly. So, let's get started. Alrighty guys, so if you guys will take one second and smash the subscribe button, hit the like button on the video, be greatly appreciated. So in this video we're going to go through pressure testing this engine. So this is an ET uh, 967 I built for a customer. Um, he's going to be running a B pipe, also uh, dual 46 carbs on a Boysen high velocity intake manifold. So why do we pressure test an engine? There's, there's two reasons. One, when you assemble an engine, you want to pressure test it to make sure you don't have any leaks that can cause it to run lean, stuff like that. Two, a diagnostic thing. So if you have an older engine or you buy you know, a donor ski you're going to pull the motor out of, pressure testing the block is a good way to see that the seals are, are still good stuff like that that you're going to put the engine in it should be sound and you should be ready to go so it's also a diagnostic thing but anytime you build an engine especially a custom engine it should be done you know these ET DASA uh, TPE bun um, you know all these larger motors that when you're modifying the stock cases, basically epoxy is holding the stock cases together. So you wanna make sure there's not a leak anywhere. So what do we need to pressure test it? So they sell some tools, but honestly, I made my own years ago and it's worked great. So this is basically what you can make at home. So it's a air regulator for you know an air tool. And I basically set it to the lowest setting. You're setting it to around 10 PSI. So it's going to be an air fitting to whatever air compressor you have. It's going to be the regulator. Then you're going to go to a ball valve, to a T, to an accurate gauge. So one thing with gauges, gauges are most sensitive right around the center. Um, so if you need to read, you know, 10 or 15 PSI, a 30 PSI gauge is normally the most accurate because you're right in the center of the scale. So I use this for a couple different things and I test between, you know, 8 and 15 PSI for certain tests, which is why I set this gauge. Don't go cheap on a gauge, get a good gauge. Um, you know, a good gauge still isn't super expensive. I think this whole setup cost me maybe 40 bucks 20 something years ago and it's still working so and then all we're going to do is a barb fitting to fuel line um, and that's really it so then what we'll do is we'll plug this into the air compressor we'll leave it locked we'll set this so it's low so you're not putting a ton of pressure into the block um, and then open it up fill it and then let it sit for you know a specified period of time so that's the gauge. Then we use block off plates. So this is a SBN 44, 46, 48, so on block off plate that I machined. I'm going to be selling these soon. So these will be out, you know, in the next week or two. Um, and then this is a factory pipe or Cowie manifold block off plate. These will also be sold shortly um, just with a rubber gasket. So let's assemble this all up and get started. So now we're using the Boysen high velocity intake manifold on this. So we're going to, I like to keep everything as close to how you're going to run it. So, you know, this has O rings, so we can put the block off plate on here and just bolt this on. Um, and we'll be good. There we go. So 
So some people, I've never been a fan of them, will actually use uh, pipe plugs, which is like an expanding round plug that you can put in the hole and expand them. I know a lot of guys swear by them. Um, I've always been a fan of aluminum or steel plates with a rubber gasket. Um, not saying one way is better than the other, it's just what I've grown accustomed to using. Now what I like to do whenever I'm pressure testing an assembly, I like to pressure test from the exhaust manifold onto the intake manifold to where the carbs are mounted. So at least that way it is the assembly that you're going to put together. You know there's not a leak. The big issue with two strokes, if you have a leak between here and before the head, really the base gasket to here, it's going to cause the engine to run lean um, and blow up. So, you know, I know a whole bunch of guys that have, you know, bad front or rear seals that they chase problems around trying to get their ski jetted correctly only to find out, you know, either right after they blow it up or, you know, after several go arounds of failed attempts at tuning a ski they finally pressure tested and they noticed, you know, it's got a bad front seal, a bad rear seal, so on and so forth. So this is a really, really important thing to do that many people miss. Especially like on the 62T, the new V-Force 3 reads, there's a very small sealing surface on them. So those reed cages are really common for leaking. So we got that in. There we go. So now, this motor has two pulse lines, so we're gonna cap one. So we'll put the cap on one, we're gonna put a wire tie on that cap to make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. Now, let's hook this guy up. So now, one thing you have to be extremely careful of when doing this, first of all, if it is a Yamaha, you either want to pull the starter or just pop the front cover. If it's a Cowie, you can just open the um, inspection port because what ends up happening is if you have a leaking front seal, that front seal pressure can be sealed in by the front cover if that's airtight. So you know, that's when you'll open the front cover, there'll be a whole bunch of oil in it. It's from a leaking seal that's been there for a long time. So you want to do that. And then, you know, both spark plugs in and tight. You want the water fittings all open. So that way, if you have a leak into a water passage, that is not blocked off. We're just looking for inside the block. So 
now with that locked Now, and we are going to slowly start raising the pressure. So we're going to bring the pr pressure to 8 PSI. Nice and slow, don't go crazy. Make sure this regulator is set, because if you end up putting, you know, 20 PSI in this thing, what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up blowing the seals right out of the motor. All right. So we are at 8 PSI and I'm going to disconnect it so there's no way a leak's going in. And now we're just going to set a stopwatch. So we will set a stopwatch. So it's kind of a debate between different builders. You know, is one minute good, two minute good, three minute good? I go with two minutes. Um, a lot of guys go with three. I know a bunch of other builders that say one is good enough. You know, it's really only got to hold the compression for one rotation, um, but you just want to make sure it's sealed. So we'll set it there. We're going to check it. You want to make sure the needle really doesn't move at all, which is why you want a sensitive gauge like this. Um, you know, if you end up trying to do this with, you know, a hundred pound gauge, you know, you could lose half a PSI in that time and it's not going to show up on the gauge. So a lot of times what I'll do is if I'm busy, I'll take a picture, set the stopwatch, go back, and then, you know, look, take a picture in the same angle, and you can see if that needle's moved at all. Because what can end up happening is if you're right on top of it the whole time, you know, it'll move slowly and you won't notice until the very end that it has actually dropped a significant amount. So especially on a power valve motor, you know, the bellows can leak, the O-rings to the bellows can leak. Um, O-ring seal, exhaust gasket, intake gasket, reed gasket, carb gaskets, so on and so forth. So we just want to make sure, you know, in the time frame, we are good to go. So we are coming up on a minute and 40 seconds and it has not moved at all. which is what I like to see. So there we go, we're at two minutes. Perfect. So. This emptier. Now the one other thing you want to make sure if you notice when I moved it the gauge you know drop like an eighth of a PSI. You want to make sure you keep this in one place because as you move the hose it can change the volume which can slightly change the pressure which that's what that was it wasn't actually a leak. So but that gives you a good idea on what you need to pressure test it how you should pressure test it um, and stuff like that. So if you guys are still here, you're awesome. Thank you. If you please like the video, subscribe to the channel, be greatly appreciated. And you guys have a great night.